Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Zhang and I'm going to be a rising senior at Newport High School in Bellevue, Washington. Today, I'm going to present to you all my research on Alzheimer treatments, namely the two medications, uh, Danebazo and Lacanema. So I'll begin with some brief background info. What is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is a brain disorder causing gradual memory decline and thinking and learning and organization skills decline. It is most common in people over the age of 65, but one in 13 people with Alzheimer's is under the age of 65. Some common symptoms of Alzheimer are confusion, disorientation, hallucinations, and speech and language problems. What causes the Alzheimer's disease? In short, Alzheimer's disease is caused by the buildup of two proteins in and around brain cells, and the proteins that are responsible for this are the amyloid protein, with, which form plaques around brain cells. There are ex examples of this in the blue circle on the picture to the right, and also the tau protein, which form tangles within brain cells. And here's an example of this in the red circle on the picture to the right. The disease first start with the brain cells being affected by the buildup of those proteins. And then, the, the, and then there will be like a decrease in neurotransmitters and a decrease in communication between nerve cells, which will eventually lead to neurons dying and the brain shrinking. Usually, the first part of the brain that is affected by this disease is responsible for memory, such as the hippocampus. So that is why we see like the most common and earliest symptoms of Alzheimer's is memory loss. The first medication I'm going to talk about today is Donepazole. For those of you who may not be familiar with the name Donepazole, this drug is sold under the name Aricept, and it is one of the most popular commonly used medications used to treat Alzheimer's currently. The Donepazole is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, and it is used to treat dementia of Alzheimer's at all stages. It is taken orally with water, and it was approved by the FDA in 1996, which can tell us that it has been on the market for quite a long time, and it, it was developed by the Japanese pharmaceutical company, SI. The second medication I'm going to talk about today is lecanemab. It is sold under the name Lacambi, and it is a monoclonal antibody drug that treats early Alzheimer's disease. And monoclonal antibody drug means that it uses uh, lab-made proteins that act as antibodies in the immune system to attack specific targets in the body. It is intravenously infused, meaning that it is injected into the patient's veins, and it was approved by the FDA just last year on July 6, 2023, and it is developed by the company SI and Biogen. So I am going to evaluate the efficacy of the Nepazo and Lacanema for the treatment of early Alzheimer's disease by analyzing their mechanisms, outcomes, and the side effects. I'm going to do so by conducting a comprehensive literature review of existing medical studies on denepazole and lecanemab on, in early Alzheimer's stages available on PubMed and SA. I'm also going to analyze the data on ADAS Kong score changes in patients after they take denepazole or lecanemab. First, I'll start by explaining how denebazole works. As I mentioned earlier, denebazole is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. This means that it restrains the action of acetylcholinesterase, which is an enzyme responsible for breaking down acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter crucial for memory and muscle movement. By inhibiting acetylcholinesterase, denebazole prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine. This results in increased levels of acetylcholine in the brain facilitating enhanced communication between neurons. Ultimately, this improves nerve cell communication and helps reduce its memory loss and effective, effectively relieve dementia symptoms in Alzheimer's patients. In this diagram, you can see that the acetylcholine is acting as neurotransmitter and transferring information between neurons and neurons. And however, when, the, when it comes into contact with the acetylcholine nesterase, it breaks down. So when the nebazole comes in, it basically gets rid of this so the acetylcholine can do their job again. 
Next, I'll, talk, I'll be talking about how lecanemab works. So earlier I mentioned that there was two proteins that was responsible for Alzheimer's disease, which are the tau protein and the amyloid protein, and lecanemab deals with the amyloid protein. Um, lecanemab works by binding to the neurotoxic amyloid beta protofibrils in the brain, and then it clears them up and reduces the amyloid plaques that causes the Alzheimer's disease. In this diagram, we can see that in a patient with Alzheimer's, there's little red dots that represent amyloid protein around their neurons. And when the cannabis comes in, it sticks to the amyloid protein and attracts immune cells to break them down, which leaves the patients with neurons that doesn't have any plaques on it. Before I start evaluating the efficacy of the nepazone and lecanemab, I'll provide a brief introduction to ADAS Cong, which is a standardized scale for assessing cognitive impairment in Alzheimer's disease. The ADAS Cong stands for Alzheimer's Disease Assessment Scale Cognitive Subscale, and it measures memory, language, attention, concentration, and coordination. Higher scores on the scale means greater cognitive impairment and just disease is more severe. The x-axis usually represents the time and the y-axis represents how much the score changed or what the patient score was. I have evaluated the outcomes of the Nebuzo and Lakinama using the ADAS Kong score and scale in two separate experiments. In both studies, approximately half of the subject took either the nebuzo or lecanemab, while the other half took a placebo. Data was collected at various intervals, but for consistency, I've decided to focus only on the ADAS Kong score at six months or 24 weeks. To the left, we can see the graph for the nebuzo. And when the, the nebuzo group is compared with the placebo group, we can see that the ADS Kong score for the nebuzol group decreased over time while the placebo group increased over time, despite that they both started at the same score. The, the nebuzol group increased, uh, decreased about 1.75 while the placebo group increased about 0.75. However, on the left, on the right, we can see the graph that represents lecanemab, and we can see that when they both started at the same score, but over time, they both had an in increase in ADS Kong scale, which means that they both have impairment in memory. However, we can see that the orange line, which represents the lecanemab group, their increase in ADS Kong was significantly lesser than the placebo group, indicating that the progression of their disease was slow slower than the group that took a placebo. Based on these findings, we can conclude that the nepazol appears effective in reducing memory decline, whereas lecanemab shows effectiveness in slowing the disease. Now I'm going to evaluate the side effects of the nepazol and lecanemab. Due to the different types of side effects that occurred for these group, I've decided to focus on only on a few criteria, which are adverse events, serious adverse events, such as cancer and death. So for the denebazole group, 70% of the patients that took it experienced some kind of adverse event, and 5% of the patients experienced serious adverse events. However, there was no death that occurred, but for the lec lecanemab, there was higher rates on all of these criteria. They had 88.9% 80, 80, of their patients experienced an adverse event, 14% experienced a serious adverse event, and most importantly, six out of 898 lecanemab patients died, which resulted in a 0.7% of death rate. For their mechanism of action, we can conclude that the nepazole boosts the acetylcholine levels while the lecanemab removes amyloid plaques. For the outcomes, the nepazole relieves memory impairment symptoms, which in turn improves cognitive function, while lecanemab slows disease progression and it delays cognitive decline. For the effects, the nepazole has fewer adverse events and sev like severe outcomes, whereas lecanemab have higher rates of adverse events and serious adverse events and even a death. 
I would like to conclude that no drug is ultimately better than the other. They both have distinct roles in Alzheimer's treatment. And I also want to mention that neither drug is a cure for Alzheimer's. However, they're both able to relieve symptoms or slow the progression of it. And the nebazole is generally safer with lower rates of adverse events and death. And one limitation of lecanema is that it's only effective for early Alzheimer's patients. However, the nebazole is able to treat patients of all stages of Alzheimer's. Some future research I think is definitely needed is study specifically aimed at comparing the effects of the nebazole and lecanemab on Alzheimer's disease. And I also wonder how effective is lecanemab in slowing the, the disease progression over the long term? Because as I mentioned before, lecanemab was only approved by the FDA last July. So that means it, that there definitely have not been any study done on how lecanemab can affect patients over five years, 10 years, 15 years. And I'm also wondering, is it possible to treat patients with both lecanemab and denepazole at the same time? And if so, how effective would that be? Here are my references. And I want to thank you to everyone listening, whether in person or online, SSF, all the staff and faculty at SSF, and all the doctors, nurses, pharmacists, therapists that came to give us a talk over the past three weeks, my fellow interns, Emma, Zara, Steph, and Sai, and most importantly, Dr. Pierre. <laughs> So again, uh, open the floor to questions from the audience or the online. Hi, I'm Emma V. Um, I was wondering what inspired you to do this for your research project? So at first, I, I kind of knew that I wanted to do something related to medications because I was interested in the ph pharmacy field. And I actually like listened to like a presentation on lecanemab before at school. So I was kind of interested in the drug like previously before I came here. And also uh, my grandpa, he doesn't have Alzheimer's, but he has really like severe memory problems. So I was kind of interested in like, like memory and like Alzheimer's, like this sector previously before I came here. So I wanted to do something like related to this while I have the opportunity. Dr. Tan. Well, I wanted to thank you for sharing your personal story. I think, uh, you know, if you have a loved one with Alzheimer's disease, it's, it's really hard, right? Mm -hmm. Person, you, you know, parent or grandparent who no longer recognizes you. That, that's really hard. Uh, something you said during your presentation really struck me. You said that these medications do not provide a cure. Mm -hmm. right? And I think in medicine, oftentimes we're so focused on finding a cure, um, especially when you're a surgeon, you, you wanna, there's a tumor, you wanna get rid of it, and hey, you, you're cured. Medicine is a lot more than that. You know, it's an art. And sometimes even if you cannot provide a cure, you can provide care and you can improve the patient's quality of life. And um, research like this, I think is really important. You know, it affects a lot of people, especially with the aging population. And if we can improve somebody's quality of life, you know, can slow the disease progression. That's really important research. So thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you, too. That was really good feedback. Any others? Okay. Thank you so much.